this uh, opening from Mr. Toto Rusianto as a dean from Faculty of Engineering, yes, the Akprint. So, Mr. Toto, time is yours. Oke, okay. uh, terima kasih. Saya mungkin pakai bahasa Indonesia saja ya. Saya buka dulu. Jadi untuk bicara saya terpaksa. Ya, uh, terima kasih. Sebuah kesempatan yang luar biasa. Selamat datang, Prof. Dr. Mansir bin Ishak. Sebuah kehormatan buat kami di jurusan dan mesin ya. Kita mendapat suatu tamu yang akan memberikan kuliah umum, guest lecture gitu ya. Nah, Prof. Mahathir ini dari Fakultas Otomotif Engineering Technology ya, University Malaysia Pahang. Ya, Alhamdulillah, Prof. Selamat berjumpa dengan kami. Ya, mudah-mudahan kita next, next time bisa temu tetap buka secara langsung ya, sambil liburan ke Jogja gitu, Prof. Sambil berkunjung ke kampus kami. Oke, harapan kami mungkin dari perkuliahan ini bisa memberikan wawasan wawasan yang luas kepada mahasiswa. Tadi saya dengar topiknya tentang laser begitu Prof. Ya, nah bayangan kita kalau dulu waktu kita masih kecil laser itu senjata senjata laser yang yang bisa melelehkan logam yang bisa melelehkan metal begitu. Nah mungkin perkembangannya sekarang mungkin sudah luar biasa sekali untuk uh, pasar gitu ya mungkin nanti untuk proses pembentukan uh, tiga dimensi mungkin seperti itu atau mungkin proses-proses yang lain uh, kepada ma para mahasiswa juga saya harapkan bisa mengikuti uh, perkuliahan ini sehingga bisa mendapatkan ilmu tambahan dan syukur-syukur nanti bisa dijadikan topik dalam sebuah skripsi gitu ya tugas akhir dan juga harapan kami mungkin nanti dengan Prof. Atsir, kita bisa menjalin kerjasama, terutama dalam bidang uh, penelitian. Karena memang sekarang uh, dari kementerian di kami, diharapkan itu ada suatu penelitian yang saling kerjasama antar negara, jadi internasional. Ya, sedang kita rintis, kita sedang coba begitu nanti mudah-mudahan uh, penelitian antar uh, university Malaysia dan Indonesia, atau khususnya dari uh, University Malaysia Pahang dan INST Akrin itu uh, bisa terlaksana. Baik, mungkin tidak terlalu panjang yang saya sampaikan. Uh, selamat kepada para mahasiswa untuk mengikuti perkuliahan ini. Dan sekali lagi, terima kasih Prof. Mahathir atas kesediaannya memberikan kuliah kepada kami. Terima kasih. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you Mr. Toto Rusianto for the opening section. So next let me begin to introduce our honorable guest lecture today. He is Professor Dr. Mahadir bin Ishaq from UMP atau University uh, Malaysia Pahang. Professor Mahadir is an expert in laser technology especially for manufacturing processes. So let me uh, show you the curriculum vitae of the Professor Mahathir. Uh, Mr. Chatur, can you help me to activate my feature for share section? Share yes, screen? already, okay, Pak Satriawan. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, can you see on your screen the curriculum vitae of Professor Mahathir here? Yes, clear enough. Okay, so Professor Mahathir uh, has the PhD in Industrial Science and currently is working as a professor in UMP. And 
uh, Professor Mahathir has so many experience in research and also in industrial experience for the research interest. Uh, uh, we can see here there are many research interests here, especially in manufacturing process, in joining and welding, and then the laser application on manufacturing process and light low, light alloy and casting. So he already have many experience in the structural of education in UMP and also the professional qualification including the membership, affiliation, and experience. Professor Mahadir has the certified welding inspector in UK. We see that so many experience he already has. And also he also uh, guiding the PhD student. Yeah. And we're very grateful, grateful to have professor joining us today to share some his experience with us. So without let's welcome our honorable guest lecture today, Prof. Mahadir. Professor Mahadir. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat siang. Waalaikumsalam. Selamat siang. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Satriawan, and then uh, Dean of uh, Faculties of Technology Industry, Dr. I.R. Toto Rusianto, and Head of Department of Mechanical Engineering, uh, Ibu Nidia Lestari, and also uh, Dr. Muklis and Pak Catur. For inviting me to this uh, lecture. Uh, I'm very honored on this inviting and hopefully uh, we can do some, uh, you can get some benefit on this lecture and if, if you have any questions and you may ask me. So uh, firstly uh, as introduced by the chairman, uh, my name is Mahazi Ishaq. I am a professor and also a dean in the mechanical uh, faculty of mechanical engineering and technology of mechanical and automotive engineering technology in university of Malaysia Pahang. I have been uh, teaching and research since uh, 2003 and about now is uh, 18 years old, 18 years for in academics, uh, doing teaching and also research as also I'm also doing some consultancy, some industry. Okay, without further ado, can I uh, share my uh, slide. You see my slide? Yes. Slide? Okay, wait there. Eh? Okay. okay. Uh, Topics that I would like to present today is uh, about laser applications in manufacturing processes. Yeah? So I try to give some, it's not such a very detailed, it's not such a very like, you know, uh, very complex. I try to present it with a general view with benefit or fit with your license degree. And this is like introduction to the laser uh, in manufacturing process. So as I told you that my name here is my name and also my some of my uh, experience. And you, if you can see further about our faculties and also university, you can go to this uh, uh, website and then you can see uh, our university that maybe you want to know more. Okay, today presentation, I have a few contents that I would like to present here. Uh, first, it's about some uh, general view or introduction to laser. A laser in manufacturing, uh, material process processing using utilizing a laser. Current trend and future drive, laser related research in UMP and also laser safety. Yeah. Okay, lasers is uh, 
short form or acronym acronym uh, based on the words of likes amplifications by stimulated emissions of radiation so it take the first letter l a s e r so it come name lasers when we see lasers it is a light light cahaya eh? cahaya light eh? light you can see light light from the sun here is from the torch light and any source of light eh? but the light from torch light for example here it is in sometimes you can see in the, in the you know the color is like bright and some light yellowish and orange but when you see the torch light actually although it is a bright it is comprised of many kinds of different wavelengths of wave. Eh? So you can see here, I, I, I draw it like, you know, in yellow, in blue. So just to differentiate the wave that coming out from the touch is, is a different in terms of shape in terms of their wavelength okay but lasers lasers is kind of monochromatic light yeah monochromatic light it has only one kind of wavelength only one kind of wavelength and it is a coherent light yeah? coherent wave what is mean by, by monochromatic and coherent wave is that it has only one kind of shape and it has only one wave kind of wavelength you can see that this is light is in red and the wave is same so it is is called coherence huh? whereas here you can see that this one is not coherent it's a compromise of many wavelengths okay so that is the so general characteristic of laser it has a power range frequency range pass duration spot diameter range and temporal distribution that i will present or i will explain you later and in terms of power it has a a wide range of power <coughs> sorry from milliwatt to kilowatts even now is mega tera uh, megawatt and so on it can have a higher watts now uh, since 1990 something up to now the improvement of laser technology is very huge yeah? so very simple of laser in milliwatt i think you also not also use that you know the powerpoint powerpoint laser powerpoint laser has a uh, power around two to five milliwatt it's very small yeah? but still it is a laser so in terms of pulse it has terahertz and hertz and some have pico millimeter micrometer and so on so there is a wide range and different kind of lasers okay so what is actually the main component in laser so i show you the figures of the basic laser resonator where it is the source of laser light yeah? so we usually it compromise in two mirror one we call it 100 percent mirror 100 percent mean 100 percent reflections and partial mirror mean that it has 90 percent reflection and maybe like 10 percent is laser will going through or the light we can go going through so the source is from laser medium so laser medium there is energy that hit the laser medium so there are a lot of atoms inside the laser medium and electrical or light energy will hit the atom and from the atom it will produce energy so the energy here is a kind of light and light will be dissipated is around this chamber okay i will show you later okay so this one laser medium we call it the gain medium hmm? and then we have pumping source pumping source mean that this one this light this one we call it pumping source optical resonator or cavity this one we call it cavity okay this one we call it and optical delivery from here they will deliver to the focus uh, to the to the lens 
and focus on the one one. It like magnifying glass, okay? And it has cooling system to cool down because when the laser here uh, running, so the heat will exist and then we need to cool down the system. If not, it will be break. Maybe the break the, uh, the mirror or it will break the system or cavity. And we have highly partially or partially affected mirror here uh, from the one end to the other end. So different kind of gain medium. So I already put that one when you see when you see the gain medium. So the gain medium, okay. And then this is a mirror. Just the figure now. This is a mirror M. This is an M. This is gain medium. Okay. Different gain gain medium. Gain, sorry, gain medium will produce different wavelength. Okay. What is wavelength? When laser irradiated, it has wave. Hmm? Wavelength is like this one. It means that from this one to this one is wavelength. Okay. So different grain, gain medium, whether it comes from the gain medium from solid state, gain medium from uh, semiconductor, liquid state, gas state, azim of fiber will have different of wavelength. You can see this figure. Okay. This is wavelength. And if a gain medium is solid state and the arc, in the arc gain medium, it will produce about 1.03 micrometer wavelength. It is from the CO2 laser, the heat source of, or the gain medium from CO2, it will, it will produce 10, 10 micrometer. Okay. It is, if it's from argon, gas type of laser will produce like almost like 480 or 490 nano, uh, micro, nanometer wavelength. So different gain medium will produce different of wavelength. Okay, I hope you understand that one. Okay, this is gain medium or the cavity. So the cavity, this is cavity. So when in the laser, they will be close look like this. Okay, they close look like this in the chamber so this we call it cavity okay this call it cavity huh? the flash tube will produce a light where it will hit light will we hit the atom inside the gain medium for example there is atom here so there are a lot of atoms here maybe thousand millions or billion atom and it will produce energy hmm? will produce energy. So energy here mean that it is in form of light. So this one also will produce energy, will produce energy, will produce energy all around and until we will hit the mirror and also it will hit the mirror. What happened? The mirror will reflect back the light and will hit another atom and this atom will hit, will produce another, another energy or light. Okay, and then this one will come out like this. The light will come here, come here, come here, and then it will produce a very high tense of energy here inside. Very high tense in terms of energy. And then when the very density, very high density of energy or light inside, then from the partial, I mean that 90% the mirror will reflect the heat, reflect the, the light and 10% will true. Meaning that the, the, the light will go in through that mirror. So one kind of wavelength will produce or going out from that mirror. This light, we call it laser. I hope you understand that one. You understand that? DDD? Right? So that light, we call it laser laser and it is coherent and monochromatic yeah? in that it has only one type of wavelength same frequency same of shape so that we call it coherent and monochromatic okay where is this is a source of laser so this is a basic of laser yeah? there are many kind of lasers so 
as I told you just now, so there are about six now. One is solid state semiconductor, liquid state, gas state, eczema, fiber, but I will only explain one type of laser. This is a new one laser, new kind of technology. It has been uh, introduced, I think, since 2000 something. Uh, and before this, people using the solid state like NDR laser and gas CO2 laser. But since the fiber laser, it is introduced in 2000, 2000 it has very um, quite advantages. Many advantages compared to solid state and also the CO2 laser because it is much cheaper than other kind of laser. So it has uh, this one energy input. I'm same like if I draw you just now the mirror and this is gain medium. This is a basic one. Okay. Okay. So this is one, there is a flash lamp here that will produce some uh, primer. Uh, light in order to heat the atom. So this one is like this one. Huh? Okay, and then the coupler will coin to the, this is fiber. And inside the fiber, yes. So the light will uh, produce and will heat the atom. And then there are a lot of uh, what intense of intensity of source or light inside this one. And they will come on force and will go in through only one kind of laser or light. Yeah? So this one is the laser. Okay, this is this one. Yeah? Simple is one. This is cavity. So this is the cavity. Okay. Basic is similar, but totally different in terms of the system. Okay. So it must it's much uh, smaller, much easy because this one is only fiber wire. This one is much bigger. It's a bulky, it's too bulk. Eh? It's a, only the wire, very small, and you can produce the source very, very small. Then you can have a very high power. Okay. So what happened after the source? After the laser source, after the source, or after the cavity, they will going out, and then we using the optics going to the fiber optics and then we try to expand eh? this we use an expander this kind of optic lens of expander and then we go into collimator lens in order to make it uh, very uniform okay and then we have a lens here to focus laser it is like i don't know maybe maybe we in uh, during our uh, primary school, we play with the, you know, magnifying glass. Uh, magnifying glass, we put uh, under the sunlight and then the magnifying glass will focus the sunlight to the paper and the paper will burn. So we use this, this light mean that we focus. The energy here produced is, for example, 100 watts. Okay, 100 watt. When we focus into a small diameter, maybe around 1 mm square. So the density is will be very high. I mean that 100 watt over 1 millimeter square. Hmm? So the heat is high density. So that because of high density will produce heat. It will produce heat and can whether you can for example what what kind of manufacture process you want to use you want to cut you want to welding you want to burn so based on the heat intensity so a higher intensity and then you can produce more heat and then will you can break you can cut you can weld and you can it depend on the watt and you can depend on the density okay that's how basic or how they use laser into the manufacturing process or into any kind of material processing. Okay, hope you understand. Very simple, eh? just a basic one. Eh? So uh, application in manufacturing is very huge since 2000 after the introduction of lasers, CO2, and then NDR laser, and then after that fiber laser. It can do many things, manufacturing process such as drilling, 
uh, cutting, okay, welding, engraving, marking, and also some micro processing. If you can see here, twenty-five percent is for laser cutting, for cutting, and another twenty-six percent on marking. I will teach, tell you what is marking. I think like Ibu Lestari are doing EDM is for cutting. So any uh, the other option that you can do for precise cutting other than EDM, maybe many people use laser for the cutting purpose because it will reproduce very fine because the spot diameter is you can you can you can make it from one mm into micron level. So you can imagine how precise the cutting. Very, very small. Huh? Very, very small. Okay. So you can see uh, the cutting, marking, and then you can see here uh, 30% is drilling. Okay. Make, ho making hole. Yeah? Making hole. Small hole. Micron level holes. Yeah? And 30% for welding to join to, to materials or to metal. Okay. So there are a lot of application in manufacturing already now huh? so laser material processing or cutting and marking if you can see here uh, the use of lasers in the manufacturing process is quite increasing up to 70 this is data for the same i think 2018 up 2020 20 now i think it will be will increase huh? so because of the fiber lasers costs now are much cheaper compared to the cost that we have last five years is many cheaper. Even now, uh, previously only the United States and America or and United Kingdom or Europe can produce laser source, but now China also producing laser source that much cheaper compared to the uh, Europe and US. So actually you can get laser for manufacturing, especially for marking, it is not much, it is not highly cost compared to the last five years, okay? So the use of laser will increase in many ways, in many types of manufacturing, okay? So laser in research, a lot they use, and sometimes maybe in YouTube, you can see that there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of also interesting in R&D in military. So now they can shoot the, uh what we call it uh, uh what you, have, you you can see they can shoot the aeroplane by laser now they produce about uh, megawatt 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 power huh? they can shoot uh aeroplane now even the you can see in the few countries like us and you europe for optical storage in computer instrumentation in sensor you can use it and medical aesthetic, some using for the uh, aesthetic. Yeah? So this one also uh, quite famous. Lithography. Communication is quite a big one to transfer a data from one point to one point using the fiber, uh, fiber wire. Okay. And now what I want to present to you is about this one. This is material processing or manufacturing. Yeah? So it is, you can see that communication and material processing is quite, I think, the major industry use uh, lasers, okay? So here are the uh, data that the using of different kind of laser. You can see this 2012, I think that 2012 already that you can see that fiber laser has quite majority. Previously in 19... 1960 to 1980, there are only CO2 laser that we use in the industry. But then they use a solid state and the laser. Okay, and the laser. Up to 1980 to 90, 2000. And after that, there is a company called. Uh, They invent a fiber laser, and now fiber laser is almost the major share in the market now. Why fiber laser? They are used because it is small. 
for one kilowatt laser, you can get the uh, power source around then around around uh, one meter to thirty centimeter, right? Please. Like maybe this one five hundred. It's a big, maybe one room of power source. And the yard laser also. If one kilowatt is like a big machine, it's much bigger than EDM machine. So you can imagine how the fiber laser uh, tremendously can uh, reduce the size, but with the higher with the higher power of laser. So that's in 2012, even 2020, I think it's very rare that people want to or solid state that they are now focusing on using fiber laser. Okay. That's why fiber laser now is uh, quite famous. So you can see here also that fiber laser become more important and people are using the uh, fiber laser as the main source compared to CO2 and solid state. Okay. So in lasers for material processing, there are a lot of phase or type of process, okay, that we can uh, grouping them into a different kind of mechanism of process. Eh? So there are three now. One is a change in phase or state, and other thing, thing another another branch is involving in there is no phase change occurred. Okay, what I mean by phase change, I mean that if you with this one is from solid to vapor okay so we hit the metal this is metal and we hit with laser this from solid there through evaporate okay evaporate so it changed from the bulk melter to the to the vapor okay that mean the phase change yeah? Then there is second one is from solid to liquid, like welding. Okay, you you heat with laser, and you melting it, and then you make it solidified. So from solid to liquid. Huh? So the process can be grouping into two here for the phase change. So you can see this one is the grouping of processes, like machining, deposition coating, laser spectroscopy, and laser assisted purification. For solid to liquid, you can see joining, brazing, uh, welding and brazing, surface alloying, cladding, rapid prototyping, and reclamation. So this is solid to liquid. But they also solid to solid mean that there is no phase change, but it can produce certain process. So like surface hardening, bending, forming, semi-corrotor annealing, and shocking and short painting. So there is no phase change happen, just solid to solid. For solid to liquid, so there is a few under the process we can we can we can differentiate. One is forming, bending, manufacturing, joining, machining, and surface engineering. So this one I will I will present here more to you after this. Yeah? Okay, application based on power density. As I told you that when how we use laser because we focusing the light laser light. This is length, and there is a uniform light, and then we focus it to the one point. This is length. Okay, then focus we point. This is high density, high input density. Eh? Sorry, that my 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 well, my writing is not <laughs> not not very good, but I hope you understand that one. So the power. You can calculate base power energy over time. Okay, it means that joule per second is in watt. Eh? So this is where you can uh, differentiate. So usually in the specification of laser, if you want to buy the laser, first you have to know how much the power. What is the maximum for the power? If you want to do welding, and then you you already know should know the how much the power for using for welding. If you want to use for marking, and then you have to know what is the power range for marking. So you can estimate or calculate that one 
based on this equation, energy over time, joules per second. It's very simple. So power density, as I told you, is the power uh, over the small area of diameter for focus area. Okay. So based on the equation, it is power and irradiation area. So from here, this one, we call it spot diameter. So in the top view, we can see like some, something like that. So this, if you see this, is the surface the, the area. So the area of this spot point is irradiation areas. This one, yeah. So joules over meter over power of two, and then you need the power watt of power of two. Okay. So interaction time is time duration. Mean that how many how many duration that you irradiated the laser onto the make onto the onto the specimen. <coughs> Second, two seconds. <laughs> One minute or two minute, okay? It depends. So based based on this, we can see that this is laser power density, okay? And it is a time interaction time, power density. So increase in power density is going to different kind of phase change, okay? If you want to go vaporization, so you need to have high power density, okay? If you want melting, it's a medium, the heating only, and then it's quite a very low so you don't need if you want to do heating you don't need to have a high power range of lasers yeah? but if you are going to cutting drilling and then you need very high power or density of laser so this is important then you can estimate what is the power range that you want to use okay so this is one another kind of process we call laser surface melting when you say melting mean that it is changed the phase change from solid to liquid all right so laser surface melting need high energy density from 2 10 power of 2 to 10 power of 4 watt per millimeter square so it's very high density very short interaction time 10 power of 3 to 1 second mean that you just if, if it's one second in general like one pass one one point only one time very very short but you can always you can do melting there you can melt the surface here is a example for the schematic illustration here you can see this is fiber laser and then you hit the surface and then you can move this laser so you can hit but the surface melting only occurred at the surface not up to the depth huh? not to the up depth huh? so this one we call it laser surface melting so what advantage of laser surface melting is that is that you can hear you can see here that this is the hardness okay hardness hv and this is a kind of a type of metal okay and compare with the untreated mean that there is no laser on that specimen on the surface and this one is melted by laser on the surface and you can see that the yeah, different mean that the hardness is increased from here to here okay increase why why it increase because when you hit the surface of metal it will change the microstructure when you change the micro microstructure then the hardness will difference okay in term of these uh, options it will increase the hardness of metal so that may be that as the protection on the surface high hardness may be quite gives you some advantage for the for the products okay improve material properties induce microstructure refinement mean that i think you know about grain size right in uh, material engineering you you learn about grain size in metal okay so there's a grain size like this for example okay grain size bigger but when you hit the laser with laser uh, with the high cooling rate high cooling rate icr it will produce the grain very fine very small hmm? small small grain so this diameter is very light maybe small micron level huh? so we will increase actually will increase the hardness okay so based on that using laser then we can do the microstructure refinement and then we will increase the corrosion resistance so it is like the surface protection for the metal so that there is very uh, the corrosion may be very 
uh, very uh, corrosion is quite different or difficult to occur on the surface with a laser method treated specimen. So the advantage of laser surface. <clears throat> and this one is another another example of process for laser surface engineering, like cladding, alloying, composite surfacing, melting, and so on. The best thing about laser is that if you want to heat the metal, for example, you put in a furnace. You know what is furnace? I hope you know what is a furnace. Okay. If you put one specimen inside the furnace, so it will heat all, all the specimen, I mean that whole whole body of the of the specimen. Right? So if you change the microstructure only, you cannot change the microstructure structure only on the surface. But if you put a surface, you will change all the total specimen. So that is disadvantage of furnace. But in laser, you can pinpoint. Okay, I want to do some uh, heat treated on this point. So you can heat the, by the laser at that point. So this one, we call it localized processing. So we, we, we only target a certain location, not the whole specimen. So that is advantage. For example, here, we want to do some melting on this area only. So it can be done by laser. That is the one advantage of laser. Inherent part of substrate, no addition failure. So if you just uh, heat up upper side, it will not impact this one. Yeah, there is no addition. Excellent microstructure feature. So when you hit this one, this surface only will change in terms of the microstructure, not the whole specimen. Okay. And the layer with thinness from 0 0.05 to 2 mm and width as narrow as 0 0.5. So it is very thin. Mean that when you do the heating on the surface, only where you can produce a very thin layer. Very thin layer. From here is 0 to 0 0.05 to 2 mm. Very thin. So this one is no effect. It's very excellent. So no effect of heat. Only this one. Okay. So this is, we call it also localized processing. I hope you understand that one. Okay, very simple. Right? So there are many kinds. There is also laser shot pinning. Uh, laser shot pinning. Uh, below, when we said about shot pinning, you don't you understand what is a shot pinning? Traditional or traditional process for shot pinning usually they use a ball hammer. Saya tak tahu di Indonesia panggil apa hammer? Tukul eh? I don't know. Tukul eh? Palu. Palu. Palu eh? Palu. So, palu. So sometimes there is one type process we call it shot pinning. When we want to increase the hardness, we we palu lah. Yeah? We pukul dengan here we we hit with the hammer. At that certain point, that point, and then we produce a stress on that surface, and that surface will make that when we put stress on that surface, it will be become uh, hardness will be increased. That is shot pinning. Some using the ball bearing, we 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 shoot with ball bearing on the surface. We mean that we we hit with ball bearing and will produce stress. That stress will increase the surface of the specimen in, in terms of hardness. Here we use laser, uh, laser, ultra short laser, mean that we put it like hammer, like that. Uh, so very ultra short mean that very fast. Okay, on the specimen like this, it will produce plasma and will produce some coating or some different on to microstructure. This one maybe here we want very high hardness. Only this point we want high hardness. This point maybe not, not need. For example, this one no need. I I want uh, this point is high hardness, so we can put we can use laser just to the short pinning. So this area only high hardness. We can do it in, with it in laser. Okay, this one is usually in the IC engine, in the uh, combustion engine. Okay, in order to promote fatigue and frictional property. So based on this one, the high hardness will uh, prevent for the wear. And also prevent for the frictional, uh, increase the frictional properties of the of the surface of this product. Okay. 
So that we call it laser shop fee. Ni, eh? Another one is laser drilling. I think you know what is a drilling. It's a process to make a hole. Okay, for example, this is hole here. All right. So usually uh, in hole, when we're making hole, usually we use a drilling machine. Yeah, we have a tool. Yeah, we, kita ada tool biasanya. Mata alat, tool. So bila tu kita akan drill. This one, kita need a tool. Yeah? We need a tool. But for laser, we don't need a, this tool. This tool is, we call it consumable. Do you know what I mean by consumable? I mean that after a period of time, this tool will wear, eh? dia karat, dia, dia, dia bercala. So the position is not, and then you have to change a new tool. But for laser, there is no tool. There is no consumable. I mean that the laser is, we, can, we call it, this is non non-contact hmm? it's a non-contact maknanya kalau tool the contact right tool with the surface this one is non-contact the laser light is not there's no tool that contact with specimen we call it non-contact process so you don't need any consumable to mean that that's very mean that instead of cost then it's safe of course there, okay? So there are two types, the long pass and this is short pass. Ataupun we call it ultra pass, you can do it. Short, long pass means that the laser is long, okay? And that you can also drill, do drilling. But the short pass, very fast and then very short length and then you can produce much beautiful hole without any burr here. This one maybe there is a certain burr. So this is parameter that we can study. That's another thing. Yeah? So there are many types of laser drilling, wedding, whether we want you to single shot drilling, this is very detailed. I, I will not explain more detail, just for overview. We have also tree planning uh, drilling and helical drilling. So here we can see that uh, there is a movement of laser light here uh, by there is a technology based on where we move the lens so we can move that laser light yeah okay usually very simple we use this one and also that sometimes maybe this one yeah? all right so this is drilling it's very also like very interesting okay very interesting so the most interesting that is it has smaller hearts and metric independent yeah? so only that metal so the hearts usually is we call it heat effector zone if you learn about manufacturing, you know should know about this thing. About this term is uh, heat affected zone. Okay, as is that when you irradiate laser on the surface, this area will vaporize, but this area will be has a uh, affected on the heat that you 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 hit that one. Eh? This is called harsh. mean that this point, this location will produce different type of microstructure. But for the ultra high laser, it will produce very narrow, small hearts, and that's very okay eh, compared to other type of process. Eh? And these are the type of uh, process, uh, laser drilling, okay, with some, some application in in the fuel filter so we can produce a very small holes you can see that it's very precise this one is 400 micrometer this, this size uh, this scale is much smaller than 400 micrometer uh, very small this micron level this is 550 micron you can even you cannot see with your naked eye uh, you can see without your eye you need to look here look the figure using microscope or scanning electron microscope. Yeah? They're very small, but very nice and yeah? precise. Yeah? This one also very precise, very precise. It's very good using laser compared to the other type of process. Okay. So in terms of laser cutting, so if uh, we compare with laser with other type of processes, okay, the rate of higher laser EDM, you can see that EDM and laser, laser is much much higher or much faster because of, you know, you can use the very high power. 
Age quality very good. Curve with good scratch. I mean that burr and distortion noise and so on. So there are a lot of advantage of laser compared to other type of process. And the, the best thing is that that I, I told you before is that it is non-contact. Yeah? So it's a pine. So what is the good is laser is non-contact. I told you about non-contact. Okay. This one is T contact. Plasma, maybe we call it non-contact. Nibbling is contact. It is also fluid. You need fluid. This is consumable, fluid contact. Wire EDM, you need wire. This wire kadang-kadang putus kan. Ha, ibu, ibu boleh study eh? Kadang-kadang ibu ni dia eh. Kadang-kadang wire EDM ni uh, bila kita buat certain method dia selalu putus. Uh, then we have to set up. Balik lah. That, uh, this is contact. Milling contact, sewing contact. Uh, this one is uh, oscillate non-contact. Non-contact. Ultrasonic is also contact. Uh, it's very high vibration of sonotrode. Uh. So this one, this one you can see that when the non-contact this consumable is Maybe no consumable is used, and then the cost of consumable is nothing. Yeah, so you can use without any consumable. Huh? Okay, laser marking. Laser marking is you can see here people doing uh, some uh, symbols, some letters, some figures on the metal, or sometimes they put in on the what uh, plastic and from uh, on the wood as for the souvenir and so on. Yeah? So we call it laser marking. Laser marking has three types of mechanism. We call it engraving, annealing, as well as a coating ablation. So what is engraving? Engraving means that we like we remove certain layer of the metal huh, with the laser. This is that I we we learn just now is from solid to vapor, right? Solid to vapor. Yeah? So we remove a quite many layers of metal and then we can produce this one. And based this one, we can we can like read write, write a letter on the surface of metal or write a letter on the surface of any metal like you know uh, wood, plastic, and so on. Okay, and then we call it annealing. Annealing, you learn about annealing is heating. Hmm? Heating. And then cooling, slow cooling. Okay, slow cooling. Hmm, slow cooling. So there's a localized, mean that only this location we heat it and we make it and we cool it. Huh? So the point, the area that irrigated with laser will produce different microstructure. So it will produce different layers here. So you can see the difference. Based on that, you can make a, any logo. Logos or writing and so on on the surface of metal. I will show you example what we, I have done within in my lab. And coating ablation, a certain material like anodized aluminium, painted metal foil and so on, there is a coating or oh, there is paint. So you can that coating using laser just for the coating. So then you can make certain uh, writing and so on like this one. So you remove the blue coating metal using laser and then you can make Take some up. yeah same some uh, writing and so on okay so very interesting i will show you some video on this okay engraving here uh kita pasal engraving so this one engraving okay this example under uh, engraving uh, we have we use a pass resolution rate the uh, kind of lasers number of overlap so how many overlap so in one point, it's not only one one time, but maybe many times. Okay, this one is many times of laser, but very fast, very fast. I will show you the video after this. And then we need a very good scanning speed. Study the optimization. Okay, intuition. So laser processing create remove outside layer. Some material there's an outside layer on the surface. So we can utilize this one. How we move that one? Maybe we remove this only point one localized area. All right, and then we can make some writing or logo inside. 
like this one. So we can put some color on the And also we can use this So the other trend in the future, I, I show you some uh, uh, just now, uh, some processes and what is the current. This is one of my topic. We did some also welding. Okay. I mean that TWB, usually maybe people, uh, this is like, uh, center pillar of car. I work with the one of uh, subsidy of Proton, Malaysia company car. They make this part. Okay, they make this part. So there actually there is a two part here. Okay, two part. So there are two part. This one and this one. Yeah. Uh, for traditionally, before this, they do like uh, they need a mall, mall, eh? mall, mall. So this one two part. You need two mall, right? So when you do two more, there are two more. And after that, what happened? You need to join this one. So then you join with the welding. Okay, so you need two more in order to produce two parts. But for TWB, we weld first. So there is cheap metal, for example like this. Okay, dua ni, dua. Kita cheap metal besar ni. Okay, kita welding dulu. Welding dulu, sheet metal. Then baru kita stamp. Stamping. Stamping. Then menghasilkan produk macam ni. So, dia ada berapa mold? Only one mold. Right. Uh, so, one mold. So, from two mold, reduce to one mold. So, cost jadi kurang lah. Huh? Smaller atau much cheaper lah. Lagi murah. So, Bayangkan dalam kereta ada banyak banyak parts. How many mall yang you 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 buat you need? So the mall investment is very high. Satu mall maybe come to millions of ringgit. Okay, it's not it's not cheaper. So uh, car company they want to reduce this cost, mall cost, and then they can use this technology. We call it Taylor welded blank technology, where we welding first the same metal and then then we so we can we can increase no we can reduce the number of more eh? so we can also be using display thickness welding I mean that maybe the thickness certain part you need they need a high thickness higher thickness thicker much thicker certain part they need uh, like thinner area so one metal is thicker t thicker and one metal is thin eh? t you want this one is T2. Okay. Welding here. Okay. Welding. Then we go to mold stamping. So we can put this one here. You can see here, this is a different metal and all different thickness. Okay. Sometimes they use boron, UHSS. So they, they uh, well, different type of metal, boron and UHSS. Okay. And then some put some welding on. So there are a lot of things that we can use in automobile. So I did this one. I have one PhD doing this one uh, using laser. So I have a two kilowatt laser, fiber laser in order to weld this kind of thickness of metal, uh, sorry, for the metal for the automotive part. Uh. Then in the aerospace also they use a uh, double side laser beam welding. LBW mean that laser beam welding yeah? okay and then for the fuse light like this so they want to join this one and this one so they 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 hit the laser here so they can join this part and this part so it is difficult to use another type of welding method but for the using laser it can be it can possible it can be possible and in ship building we can use stiffen plate ini macam tulang tulang eh? so tulang so we can laser here so very simple uh, very nice and then it can be produced of efficient process for this kind of product yeah. laser cladding you can see they want to repair this one 
how you want to repair this one? Very difficult. Usually they use a welding uh, method. Now you can use a, a laser in order to repair this area. Like we call it cladding. Eh? Cladding. You put filler, we, we melt the filler and then it can attach the metal on the surface. So we can repair this uh, problems. Okay. Uh, in this one, in turbine like this, you know. Okay. Uh, what lagi? Uh, in automotive component, piston, yeah, you can put this, that. And this one in the cladding on the surface of pipe. Yeah? And also maybe for the paint and so on. So we can use that one. This is a, a new trend. Uh, some process that they use on the aerospace and auto automotive and also for using in the petroleum industry. Other thing they can produce, uh, what to say is a solid product from powder. So you can see here is bulk metallic glass. It is metal, metal that has characteristic like glass. Uh, that is a bulk metallic glass. So we can they can produce this like this uh, using laser. So it will produce using different type of metal from powder from powder so we heat with laser and it melt so you can make a bulk metal dust okay so this one for solid uh, using that 3d printer using layer using using powder and then we melt the powder and then we can make a product like this it's like the 3d printer huh? Okay, this is very interesting. It's a new, quite new. They call it laser cleaning. They clean what? On the surface of metal. So this one, we call it rust. Di Malaysia, kita panggil dia karat. Huh? Apa di Indonesia panggil ni? Warna kuning-kuning. Bila besi or steel, uh, when we put in uh, on the outside, uh, then the wick, they put it jadi macam ni lah. This is outside layer. Rust, huh? rust. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, rust. So, uh, we can clean with laser. Usually, very difficult to clean this one. Uh, most uh, efficient, they use uh, chemical. But the chemical is not good for our health and environment. And it's very difficult to clean. But using laser, I show you. Using laser, we can clean it very easy and very fast. Okay, you can see here. See, easy, faster. Okay, this one is uh, on the surface of pipes. Okay. Very fast, right? Easy and fast, faster. And not using chemical, good for environment. There is no like liquid, liquid waste. And when you're using chemical and then you have to think where we can what uh, put the waste. But here when using laser, you cannot, you do not need any, any consumable, okay? Okay. Okay, that is a, a new trend, laser cleaning, we call it. And then we have also laser additive manufacturing for bi biomedical material. This is a kind of uh, 3D printer. I think most of you know what is a 3D printer. Now using a design from CAD, and then you just uh, you just uh, produce a product, yeah? 3D printer, like 3D printer. Yeah? Uh, this one is for biomedical. Okay. Sometimes you need customize. You don't need a high volume. 
uh, when you want to do uh, produce high volume of product, you need a mold. You can use a mold maybe much cheaper. But sometimes we just need a very small volume. When we want to make a small volume, we have when we want to do molds, the cost is very high. So it's not compatible. So it's much easier. You can use this kind of 3D printer or laser additive manufacturing. And then you can produce a product, customized shape and what you want. Okay, this one is customized. This is for the implants. Huh? And then this is for teeth, huh? artificial teeth, and so on for dental and so on. So for example, dental, uh, kini dipanggil apa? Gigi palsu kan? <laughs> uh, certain people ada different size. Uh, so you nak, you want to find, you nak cari yang standard dengan gigi setiap orang tu tak sama. So to every people tu, the shape tu different. Jadi kita kena customize. Uh, so customize, tiba-tiba kita nak guna mall, rugilah sebab mall mahal nak buat. So it's very simple, just using the LSM and we can my which your shape, apa yang sesuai dengan gigi kita lah. So it's much cheaper and very, much very efficient. Eh? Okay, this is a major training. Laser surface texturing also. Now this is one other process. So we can put uh, some texture on the nanotube, very small. Nanotube tu dah kecil, uh, very small, but now we can produce texture on that nanotube. So that is possible only using laser. Okay. So why they put the texturize on the surface of titan, uh, titan oxide is that they want to study the cell addition. Yeah. Ada kadang-kadang researcher dia mau study pasal uh, growing of cell. So you they need the place. So they put on the titan oxide and then they, they can grow cell inside. Hmm? Dalam biomechanical, biomedical lah. And sometimes uh, in the implant, uh, something implant, uh, artificial bones, so they now increase in terms of the friction and wear resistance, so they put some texture on, side in, on the surface. So, so that this also can be used, can be done on like using laser. Uh. So you can see here that very small groove, hexagon, triangle, this is micron level, uh, micron level scale. Okay. And many kind of texture, then you can use laser as the as the source cost of making this kind of shapes. Eh? All right, this is laser uh, surface texturing. This is a laser engraving, much more on the like this one is a tape. Okay, Captain tape. You can put some figures on the tape. And then this one is a microfluidic. There is a small tunnel. Okay, kat dalam ni ada liquid boleh boleh lalu lah. Uh, ini dalam biomedical selalu guna lah. Uh, so, very small, this is 400 micrometer, maybe this one is about 300 micrometer. It is very difficult to produce this tunnel using another type of process. But for the laser, using laser, it can be, it can, it, it can be possible. Huh? It's very nice. Okay, this is laser engraving. And this is quite interesting uh, uh, in the technology of biomimetic where we copy the natural characters of like uh, plants or animals. Huh? This one we mimetic of lotus leaf. Huh? Lotus leaf. Sometimes in Malaysia kita panggil daun keladi. Eh? Di sana ada daun keladi. Ada, ada prof. Ubi keladi. Ada. Eh? Ubi, keladi. Yeah. So, ubi keladi itu kalau uh, lihat kalau kena hujan, uh, air dia macam ni, dia tak stop. It not absorb. Okay, air tu akan jatuh. So, we can mimic. Mimic. Mimetic is mimic. And we can tiru lah. We can copy like that. By producing a very small, tiny microstructure like this texture. Huh? Okay. We call it uh, by mimic. So, based on the structure, the, the water will not spread. Hmm? Because of the stress, high tension. Huh? And uh, weighty angle, it produces that the water is, will be uh, particle like that, and it is not spreading or not absorbed by the by the surface. Uh, so we can mimic that one. This one is possible by using laser, just I show you before using laser texturing method. Okay, all right. So there are many type of biometric, many type of uh, we call it structure that we 
you want to do when you want to make on the surface of metal uh, very small micro five micron you cannot see also with your naked eye you have to using the microscope or scanning electron microscope huh? and this is a texture very small huh? uh, but it can uh, give some benefit on us huh? so biometrically so you can see this uh, leaf yeah so the water is not spreading on the surface of the leaf huh? why so we put we, we 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 can we can find this one by uh, looking inside this surface using microscope and we know that there is a uh, some surface texturing natural surface texturing on the on the leaf so we can mimic tiru lah we can copy and we make on the surface of metal or any plastic and so on this is a study uh, in the university of Rochester scientists so they make a super hydrophobic black platinum platinum and they're using a laser and you can see it's very like interesting you know huh? see so the water is not spreading even it is it can <laughs> it can jump okay it will reflect like that because why it's because of the surface yeah? uh the surface has a very fine texturing that it can uh, prevent the water from spreading on the surface we use where we use in the technology of self cleaning you can see that certain car like the high space expensive car you can see that sometimes uh, motor car ada motor car yang mahal tu uh, lama you tengok dia dia tak dia tak ada apa dia tak kotor pun dia tu tak cuci pun sebab the surface tu mempunyai elemen self cleaning sebab surface tu di produce di, di manufacture supaya ada tiny microstructure ataupun tiny texture dekat situ so kotoran grease kotor kotoran tidak melekat di surface ataupun di permukaan kereta uh, so that is a technology that can be used eh? and also we can produce particle or nanoparticle when you say nanoparticle mean that the size d diameter is usually less than 100 nano 100 nano okay so if the d is uh, 10 nano and we can name it as a nanoparticle there are a lot of type of process to produce nano usually it's very complex complex but here you can use laser where you can put the type of metal that you want to produce the particle inside the place inside the i think the beakers and so on and then you put some liquid and this liquid whether you can use ethanol and also some water and sometimes some liquid uh, i have a final project student uh, for year degree are uh, studying this uh, process so they irritated laser on the surface and that we could it will produce a particle so laser hit the target heated it okay we produce a plasma plum in that high density power and then it will produce from solid something that i've called from solid to vapor it will produce like nanoparticle so on the inside the liquid and for certain certain matter of time they will englobate maknanya dia bergabung kadang-kadang tu bergabung jadi besar but certain this one uh, mungkin problem dia yang kita saya perlu atasi is macam mana untuk prevent the agglomeration lah but from here then we can produce a nanoparticle so it's easy very simple you want to produce nanoparticle okay okay and then i did some laser uh, well uh, process of welding in my labs uh, for welding i think most of you learn about where manufacturing welding is uh, we join want to join between the two different part or two same similar part if you use uh, like welding autogenously mean that without filler usually we weld metal sometimes you put filler in but if you, there is no filler we call we call it autogenously sometimes we use filler there is also we call laser hybrid welding using laser brazing assisted sometimes that there is a like uh, mig this is mig and we put laser inside next first the the uh, the metal heated by laser and then 
heated by the MIG. So two, two times of heating happen. So we call it hybrid. Eh? I mean that the mix of process. Oh. We have also type of laser penetration that I was told you after is conduction and keyhole. And then we can also wear this similar type of metal. Okay, for example, aluminium alloy, six, six series aluminium alloy, welding with seven series aluminium, different types. Or the similar thickness of metal we can also weld by the laser. So this is a some like structure or different type of grouping of welding process on the using laser. Eh? So this is a component uh, of laser. So the laser coming from the heat source cavity tadi yang first basic eh medium game semua tu so dia masuk ke dalam ni kita panggil laser head ya yeah, laser head komponen dia kita panggil laser head so dia ada mirror di sini di mirror ni okey dia ada tanda tanda mirror ni so mirror dia akan turun ke bawah dekat bawah ni ada lens and lens ni dia akan lens dan baru dia fokus okey so di sini katakan kita nak welding kat sini so this is the point that we want to weld. Okay, focus on the laser and then we melt that and then then welding occurred. Huh? After that we can check dia punya mechanical properties, we can check dia punya apa ni top view of laser ni we can know how much the diameter. Okay, diameter. When we know the diameter, we can calculate the tadi saya bagi apa? heat density kan? Heat density, and watt per millimeter square, right? We can calculate it. Okay. So laser welding is a complex. Uh, it involves many kinds of parameters. So kalau tengok sini parameter sangat banyak lah. So PhD student saya memang uh, interestingly uh, banyak parameter dia study. Like very interesting. From some parameter we can do as a variable. Some parameter we can fix it, hmm, fix uh, with a certain number. Huh? So we can laser ni banyak jenis, banyak parameter, and then material lagi, what kind of material, and then focal length, bit angle. Okay, using this one we, we do constant configuration for clamping. Huh, untuk clamp, uh, we need the clamp. Yang ni clamp, huh? clamp untuk pegang dia, supaya jangan bergerak. Or sometimes clamping is very important to reduce the uh deformation eh? dia selalu deform eh? kalau kena heat because of heat stress thermal stress dia akan deform okey so kita kena tengok juga dari segi clamping eh? and then we need also the shielding gas shielding gas here in order to prevent prevent from oxidation prevent from oxidation eh? okay so we need the shielding gas so this also has some effect on the welding process okay and there are two types we call it tadi kita panggil conduction welding conduction welding using very low power low power and low density okay. usually we want to we want we want we don't want to welding it deeply kita tak nak welding sampai ke bawah we we want to welding on the surface so here is a surface so masa kita tengok sini gambar ni tempat welding kita adalah kat area sini saja okay this one sheet metal one sheet metal two we don't want it until the bottom just one micro level saja so we can use this kind of process we call it conduction welding using low power and low density so this area only for the welding so uh, dekat bawah ni this no effect at all okay so low welding depth, depth low coupling efficiency low very smooth and high speed so micro level okay yeah? application is laser welding of thin work piece like foil wire thin tube and enclosure nah, kalau kita nak welding a thinner metal then we can use the conduction welding next we call it keyhole welding keyhole welding mean that we want to weld deeper eh? lagi dalam as you can see this one gambar ni so dia dalam eh? sampai ke bawah ini sampai up to the uh, toward the bottom of the plate so very uh, deep and very small in terms of the width, narrow. Uh, ini the kelebihan dia. Yang tadi luas, wider, shallow. Huh? Wider, shallow. This one narrow, deeper. Narrow, deeper. So depend on where 
we can we want to use it. Uh, so this one you want to deeper penetration, and then you can use the keyhole value. Mean that it is high power, high power or high density. Huh? Okay, high power and the high density. All right. So welding uh, using laser they also defect. Uh, like uh, anything is not perfect lah. Uh, sometimes, but laser uh, produce lesser defect compared to the uh, traditional welding like MIG, TIG, SMAU, and so on. Uh, so it's much much better than that kind of process. Uh, so uh, low porosity uh, and then low crack. Yeah, uh, sometimes it also crack, but we can uh, prevent it. Uh. And then also, uh, usually this is all, always happen voids, hmm, blow hole, and so on. But we can prevent it with certain method like preheating, uh, post heating, and so on. Okay. So welding microstructure. So when we welding, this is well area, usually very small, uh, very small, and because it's very small, the has also small. Uh, we call this is has heat effector zone. In welding, this is the weakest point. Any welding. So the smaller the area, the better the welding part, the welder part. So the using laser, smaller, we can produce smaller heart and that very high in terms of tensile because it has very small heart. Yeah? Okay, so this is, we need much smaller heart for welding. So laser is better. They can they only produce narrower hearts compared to the other like MIG, TIG, and so on. So this is where I'm doing research now. Uh, so a lot of using laser for welding, uh, like making tunnels for microfluidics, laser engraving, uh, some brazing, and then surface modification, laser cleaning. Also, I did and fabrication of nanoparticle and the last is this is much interesting that we can do color on metal without any paint kita perlu cat uh, paint no painting just using laser we can color the surface on metal so this is boron steel i do welding i, I think uh, i just uh, quick on this as i present tadi pun so this is the welding uh, the cita so this is where my laser, one of our laser machines, is is a two hundred watt. We can maximum my two thousand watt. It is a Q switch, mean that we can do continuous welding, and also pass welding. Okay, we can use a continuous and pass welding. All right, so we can interchange one based on application or type of specimen we want to weld. Okay, so this is heat. Uh, this is uh, a uh, laser head. Okay, and then this is a mirror. Inside this one is the lens. Huh? All right. So the moving is X. Uh, this uh, table will move. Okay. And then Z direction is this one. Huh? This is X, Y. Sorry, Y, X. Okay, so table moving X, Y. And that is the laser head. Yeah. This is a, a customized. We fabricated by ourselves. We just buy the laser and we make the programming to move there. Uh, we we make the CNC uh, table. Okay. So this is uh, the parameter we use, right? To weld or to. So this is example of boron steel we welding. Okay. So we we check we we check the tensile and we study their where it fail, what what happened after it fail? Okay, and then we do the tensile stress, tensile test, how much the uh, the uh, ultimate stress, tensile strength, and it is good on. Then we look at the surface whether there is defect or not. Okay, uh, whether we can do some optimization or not. Yeah, we study on that metal welding. Okay, and then we look at the microstructure. Any impact on microstructures, okay? Any different phase like ferrite, perlite, and martensite? Any different or any change into the phase? So we study on that to find the good output using 
plane the welding. Okay. And we confirm it with the hardness. Okay. And we need to know how much the hard area. So the hard area. This one. Yeah? So as I told you, narrower the hard, much better on the product of the welded product. Okay. Okay, you can see here the wire has to be 30 micron meter only, very small using laser. If you're using the small, it's much higher, it's much wider. So it's not good. So we weld this one and we got a very good in terms of the optimization. And we know which is what is the peak power, what is power duration, but what pass rate energy, and then we can produce that higher tensile strength of metal. So this one we can use. So after that, we don't need to do any experiment on this on this uh, on this model steel. We already know what is the optimization process, optimization of optimization uh, parameters. Okay. And then this is using uh, laser welding on uh, magnesium alloy using in the micro in the electronic industry. It's a very thin sheet, very small, very thin. It's up to 0 0.1, 0 0.0, 0 0.3, and 0 0.5 mm yeah? thickness. So we do the edge welding. So this is 3, 0 0.3 mm. So we try to welding this one. So we got this one. Mm. Then the most difficult thing about uh, magnesium, it is flammable. Flammable mean that apa, mudah terbakar. Uh, well, uh, magnesium adalah uh, satu uh, metal yang mudah terbakar. When you put, uh, when you give a very hard heat, it will burn. Then jadi hitam lah, black. So it's not good because of oxidation. So we have to control that one in the closed chamber. Closed chamber. And then kita tutup dia dengan kaca. Kaca eh? glass. Glass. So dalam ni kita vacuum dulu. Vacuum. And then kita masukkan argon gas. Lepas tu. So it protect in term of the oxidation, and then kita guna laser, laser through the lens, through sorry through the glass, dia menembusi glass, and then kita welding dia. Uh, very the impossible kan? Menampak macam impossible tapi possible lah. Tidak boleh dibuat dengan another type of process. Ini is non contact tapi tadi. So laser itu boleh melalui uh, transparent because the glass is transparent. Dia boleh melalui glass tu dan boleh turun ke sini, and then kita welding. So, you know, well, very interesting, right? Huh? Yeah. Just so, tembak the guys too. Uh, that's very interesting. Uh, so kita boleh welding lagi guys too. Very interesting that one lah. Huh? So kita ada buat tu. Okay, then well well. So kita tengok dia punya microstructure. What is the parameter happen inside? So this one is certain. So well welding. So kena boleh join lah. Dua. Well, cuma ada sedikit lah. Why crack tu? Yang mana kita tajil lah kenapa dia berlaku? Okay, and then we look at the penetration depth, position, maybe position di ujung dengan position offset sedikit. Uh, kalau kita buat offset, then there is a certain difference in term of the parameter or the performance ataupun properties of that welding. Okay, so study and then we can see that uh, mana yang sampai, yang ni macam yang ni tak sampai. Kan, yang ni tak sampai sikit saja, sikit saja. Uh, yang ni sampai dalam juga tapi macam ada ever price kat sini. Kat sini much okay tapi ada sikit void. So we study uh, which one is much better, what which one can do. And then we refine to find the optimization parameter dan so sometimes we, we do the cleaning and without cleaning so the result will be different. So there are a lot of parameters we have to consider in order to join the two types of metal, two, two metals. And sometimes we, we also need to look at the Oxidation surface, hmm? uh, sama ada kita ground dengan tak ground, so dia akan menghasilkan different lah. And we look at corrosion, sometimes saya uh, introduce the filler, menggunakan silver nanopartikel, so kita welding dekat situ, kita tengok uh, untuk silver nanopartikel ni, tengok dia tak, dia tak, dia tak, dia tak korot tu. Tapi yang korot adalah dekat base metal, dekat welding area tak korot, huh? well area. Base metal yang korot because of that filler lah. Huh? So that is very uh, good thing about kita produce filler, kita laser dan kita guna filler. Uh, Analytic new technique. Okay. And this is laser marking. Okay sorry. 
in my play story laser marking so kita buat macam-macam list my lab certain laser kita ada satu dua tiga ada tiga laser uh, satu satu dua tiga laser kita nak beli satu lagi laser empat laser lah so I can show you uh, my lab uh. kita boleh buat souvenir on the plastic part pada kunci uh. ni contohlah saya buat pada keychain hmm. Saya buatkan kepada satu persatuan ni, dia minta kami buatkan, so kami buatkan lah. This one we make it to the association of Harley Davidson hmm. Motors in hmm. Johor Bahru. Awesome, awesome. Ha, right. So, very good. So, banyak lagi kita buat. This one on the surface of the souvenir plating. <coughs> okay, banyaklah kita buat. Huh? Lot of thing. Student lah, uh, uh, previous prime minister. <laughs> One we put on the apa kayu. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So, yeah. so ini mana? Okay. And then uh, we we'll do we do also laser surface texturing on the titanium alloy. So we put uh, zero but yeah uh, one micron of gap. And uh, we laser on the surface. So we tengok tadi yang yang kata uh, hydrophobic yang tadi kan macam dalam keladi. Oh, macam mana nak menjalankan? Oh, boy. No. Sorry, this one. Oh. Oh, I cannot. Kenapa tak boleh buat video? Sorry. Okay, sorry. Eh? Okay. Okay, different uh, texture. So, the water yang uh, speed tu akan berlainan. So texture ni berlainan. Ada yang cepat turun, ada air tu yang lambat turun, okey. Uh, so we did it with the laser lah, uh, surface texturing. Uh, yang first ni laju ah. Eh. Maknanya air air turunnya terus. Okey, yang ni slow. That another thing to buat certain. And the last one is very interesting. We went color on the surface. Kita guna cat without painting kita laser saja so you can see that on the surface of metal kita boleh buat kuning pink yellowish brown dulu kita boleh buat warna hitam saja sekarang kita dah boleh buat macam macam lah so many kind of uh, logos and lot of colors we call it laser laser coloring laser coloring ini kisah saya ada student uh, final year student tahun 4 yang ini uh, insyaallah ada seorang dua orang master student akan masuk lah hopefully huh? Ini contoh, kita buat black color on the surface Tak perlu guna cat lagi without painting Guna laser saja. Black color Tak perlu guna marker, without marker, just laser So it's permanent Permanent black color huh? uh. But ya yeah, itu adalah proses-proses that is uh, yang kita buat di UMT but the most important thing about laser is the safety although it's a light sometimes kita tak nampak light itu kita tak nampak dengan cahaya tapi dia boleh memberi kesan dari segi safety 
and then because that we categorize laser from level from level to level level one to level four huh? level one maybe is a very small and level four is much higher level one uh, is uh, like my power pointer in your laser laser four maybe you can use for welding and laser uh, cutting and so on so the range of laser this one uh, walaupun kecil uh, ingat tak 2017 ke 18 ada per, apa tu pertandingan sepak bola okay. Malaysia dengan Indonesia kan <laughs> uh, biasanya sepak bola antara Malaysia uh, Indonesia musuhan <laughs> kan ada isu uh, menggunakan apa laser kepada yeah. pemain uh, ini menyebabkan hmm. mata okay. sebenarnya the effect is much much uh, much worse actually hmm. Hmm can make that you know it will be blind many people you can make blind although that mm. laser has a very small power or uh, two milliwatt to five and this kind of laser is very small what uh, what, what happened is that uh, inside our eyes there is a retina the retina is like a screen a screen so when we <laughs> laser <laughs> will be burned, it burn and will break that retina. So this will break when you this retina is broken and then you cannot see. It's blind. It's totally blind. You cannot use any glass anymore. Huh? Kalau kita kalau you pakai kaca mata sebabkan oleh Uh, di sini dipanggil rabun dekat rabun jauh disebabkan oleh kantak otot di itu mungkin mengembang mengecut so what you fix is by using the glass so when using the glass the focus point the focus point okay uh, kita punya mata ni macam ni kan huh? contoh eh? mata kan huh? so di belakang ini ada retina huh? so ini adalah kita punya kantak right so dia tu masuk and then dia akan fokus pada retina right so and then you can nampak lah okay ha, ini kalau katakan you mata you uh, kurang nampak sometimes that you focus is just default ni retina retina center just default focus is one atau you punya fokus kat di dalam retina so ini menyebabkan you tak nampak rabun punya rabun sini but when you you pakai glass kaca mata and then you kena boleh boleh baiki dia punya dia punya fokus this is because this this one lah but kalau dia retina ni rosak then how thicker you punya kaca mata pun dia akan dia tidak akan menyebabkan you melihat lagi lah and you make you you you, you are totally blind yeah. so what i want to say to you is that the laser is very dangerous to your eyes so we need to wear a goggles uh, the specific goggles that can Uh, filter different kind of wavelength so bila pakai tu dia akan protect daripada laser masuk ke dalam mata lah so masa menggunakan laser kita perlu kena pakai goggles and then saya nasihatkan kalau you ada powerpoint jangan mainkan kepada mata kawan-kawan yang akan merosakkan retina akan menjadi buta eh, atau blind so that is a dangerous of laser uh, that we have to take care and that one I finish my presentation Uh, dengan uh, terima kasih dan if you have any question after this and I'm gladly to answer your question. Thank you very much for this uh, presentation. I pass to the uh, chairman. Well, uh, thank you Professor Mahadi for the excellent lecture. Uh, here I have some notes from the previous lecture. Uh, the first is like general characteristic of the lesser we know that Uh, the first is power range, and then frequency range, and pulse duration, spot emitter range, and temporal distribution, uh, which is can influence any process and application for the using of laser for manufacturing. And also, uh, on the previous lecture, uh, Professor said that the different gain medium can affect the pulse of the uh, light that will be produced from the laser itself so we can mm, modify the different wavelength by modifying the gain medium okay uh, for the next session uh, ladies and gentlemen we 
begin our Q&A session. Uh, you can raise your hand in the monitor so or using the emoji so we can unmute you or you can type the question in chat box. Either you can use uh, English or Bahasa. Okay. So we start the Q&A session right now. Maybe from student, if there are some question, please welcome. Oh, all right. Uh, here we have a question from Shahid Siddiq from Mechanical Engineering. Okay. So the question is uh, the first, what is the side effect that will be occurred on the operator according to the lesser use? And the second question is how much the cost for every manufacturing part uh, that will be produced by the manufacturer method, manufacturer lasering method. Okay, thank you for the question. First question about the side effect on the operator. Okay, first side effect, there is uh, first, uh, the most uh, uh, important thing yet that you have to take care is about your eyes first. Uh, eyes. Uh, because that I put in the laser safety is uh, the eyes. Every operator, they have to use the different goggles. For example, if you want to use a laser of CO2, you need the goggles for CO2. The goggles, you know goggles, right? Goggles, yeah, goggles. So, CO2 goggles. CO2 has wavelength 10.6 micron meter, the wavelength. So if you want to use the goggles, so you have to go use the goggles for 10.6 micron filter. If you want to use the fiber laser or ND laser, the wavelength is 1.06 micrometer. So you have to use the goggle of 1.06 filter for the goggle. You cannot fix that. For example, you have goggle 10.06 10, 10 micrometer and you use a, a laser fiber laser. So it's not compatible, very dangerous. So first it's about your eyes. You have to see because although the power of laser is smaller, like five milliwatt, Still, still, it will affect into your eyes if you directly, if the laser directly going inside to your to your to your eye. So make sure if you have, if you don't have goggles, don't look at that. So you don't look at the at the laser unless you have goggles. Then you can look. If you look and then if you you, you can you can enter your eye. First, take care of your eye. The first thing, if you use the high power laser like two kilowatt. I have a two kilowatt laser. So you don't you don't need to you the operator usually don't stay at the chamber or near the laser. The controller may be the next door or next room. From they, they control the, the laser machine from the next room. So it's far from that. So don't don't go near to the laser because laser it is a it is light, it's a kind of light. Uh, what happened? When light, if we hit on the surface of mirror, for example, mirror, what happened to the light? Mirror, it will reflect. If you have a light and then you uh, hit to the surface of mirror, the light will reflect back to you. So that is very dangerous of laser. Mean that if you doing process on the surface of metal like aluminium, it look like a mirror, right? Metal is like mirror. So the metal can reflect. It can reflect. So whenever you do laser process on the metal, on the on the metal, then make sure that you are uh, using goggles or going outside from that room. That is very so they have to take care of that. Usually operator that has high power laser, they control from different rooms. And I think I think the other side effect I don't I don't I don't think there's a another side effect uh, because it's not like 
nuclear power, nuclear or not something like that. There's no side side effect on that. The most taking care is about the your eyes. Yeah? So the second is how much the cost for product. It depends. It depends on the cost of product. If you say about welding and the cost is much higher, but it it is much cheaper than the uh, traditional one. If you want to do marking, it's very cheaper. I did marking sometimes. Uh, I take take something one ringgit. I don't know one ringgit in, in, in Indonesia. One ringgit is a uh, here is quite uh, three thousand rupiah. Thousand, but you know, based on different of uh, gap of living, uh, maybe one ringgit. I think it's a very cheap, very cheap because it's fast, it's very fast, and then you can do it on the type of metal. But it depends on product or what what kind of product. I think the process is not expensive. Sometimes. Uh, the material that you want to buy is much, much uh, uh, what's okay, much expensive than than your process. You understand what I'm saying? The metal is much expensive than the process itself. Okay, but of course, laser uh, you need to invest on the machine. The capital of investment may be higher uh, for the first time, and after that, maybe even much. I hope it, it answer your question. Okay, jadi uh, jawaban dari Prof Mahathir tadi terkait dengan pertanyaan yang pertama adalah mengenai keselamatan tentang laser itu kita harus menyesuaikan uh, laser apa yang akan kita gunakan, kemudian Google apa yang akan kita pakai gitu. Jadi kalau kita menggunakan laser yang tipe CO2 atau CO2 ya gunakan uh, Google yang untuk CO2. Kemudian kalau tipe lasernya fiber gunakan Google yang sesuai. Nah, kurang lebih seperti itu ya untuk yang pertama pertanyaannya. Kemudian terkait dengan pertanyaan yang kedua tentang biaya manufaktur, itu tentu lebih murah ya dibanding dengan metode konvensional. Ya, dari segi harga tadi disebutkan bahwasanya kurang lebih untuk engraving itu satu ringgit atau tiga ribu rupiah ya. Justru yang jadi pertimbangan itu malah di uh, biaya untuk materialnya. Nah, itu jadi biaya materialnya itu perlu kita jadikan concern yang lebih utama dibanding biaya manufakturnya karena pasti manufakturnya biayanya bisa lebih rendah dibanding biaya material. Oke, okay. uh, for the third question we have uh, from Agung Wicaksono. Uh, this is also a student from yeah. ST Aftrin. Yeah. Uh, the question is uh, how to choose the type of laser machine and how to uh, the how to doing the maintenance properly. Okay, the, the first question is how to choose a laser machine. So you want to choose laser machine, it depends what kind of process you want to do. Uh, for example, you want to do welding. Welding, you need higher power. For example, for welding of steel or aluminium, I'm using one kilowatt to kilo, two kilowatt of laser power. Okay, what kind of laser laser? I use fiber laser. One kilowatt of laser power is almost similar to 10 kilowatt of CO2 laser power. Hmm. So uh, there is advantage of fiber laser. Fiber laser is much recent lah, recent technology. So one kilowatt of fiber laser lebih, lebih kurang bersamaan dengan 10 kilowatt CO2 laser. Faham tak? So hmm. mean that in term of welding and cutting, uh, welding and cutting, it must better to use one kilowatt of fiber laser. Alright? So it much cheaper and much efficient. Yeah, that is the welding. If you want to do cutting and then uh, not only laser but the head, laser head is much 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 different. Uh, so I did a certain different. Maybe I, I will share you another. If you have point, we can I can I can show another uh, talk with different different kind of uh, process. And if you are marking, you are marking, you need you don't need a high power laser, but you need high power frequency. You need high frequency of laser. Uh, the power may be not much, maybe two. 20 watt, 20 watt only, 20 watt or 30 watt, but the frequency may be up to the uh, kilowatt, kilohertz, kilohertz. For welding, maybe you need you don't need kilohertz, just up to hertz only, or maybe you can you can you can go to kilohertz. But for the marking, you need much higher frequency like kilohertz or kilo and megahertz, a much much higher frequency. Huh? So if you want to do for anything like what uh, marking, uh, 
uh, tadi marking and then uh, laser welding and cutting and then for texturing also same you need nano pass nano pass laser uh, it much 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 cost compared to the uh, welding laser for welding and cutting because the pass nano pass is much very very small in terms of pass the cost is very very expensive so it depends on what kind of process that you have. so I, I just told you tell you about general some general specification on different type of processes okay so there is a first question second question what about maintenance and surprisingly surprisingly if you use fiber laser there is no maintenance mostly i can tell you there is no maintenance compared to co2 or in the laser and the laser you need you need maintenance about depend on 20,000 hours you use you have to you have to change the uh, flash lamp you have to change the cooling water inside the cavity and so on if you use using co2 sometimes it break down uh, the glass break and co2 gases is going out from the glass and you have to fill in that glass so that is a maintenance happen on in the and on that on the machine on the laser but for the fiber laser almost there is no is there is no maintenance okay so i'm using my laser about five years now there is no such big maintenance uh, sometimes maybe the software only the software and so on something like that but for the consumable like co2 and the there is no such big maintenance okay hope uh, satisfy you or answering your question okay jadi uh, jawaban dari profesor tadi terkait dengan pertanyaan dari mas agung itu kalau kita mau memilih cara memilih yang baik untuk mesin laser itu kita memilih Uh, untuk apa mesin laser itu akan kita gunakan. Jadi ya, kalau kita ingin gunakan untuk welding ya pilih yang mesin laser dengan daya yang besar. Kalau hanya untuk engraving ya dayanya uh, bisa yang lebih kecil. Uh, sebagai referensi misalkan kalau uh, fiber laser dibanding dengan CO2 laser, kalau fiber laser cukup 1 kW itu setara dengan 10 kW CO2 laser, kurang lebih seperti itu. Nah, kemudian terkait dengan cara cara perawatan mesin laser cara perawatannya tadi dari penjelasan profesor beliau menjawab bahwasanya untuk fiber laser itu tidak dibutuhkan perawatan tapi kalau untuk jenis laser yang lain seperti CO2 kemudian NIAG itu perlu perawatan yang signifikan khususnya kalau CO2 perawatannya bisa di bagian komponennya yang terkait dengan sinarnya ya atau apa tadi senternya ya mungkin ya bagiannya ya yang kurang lebih seperti itu oke okay. uh, itu perawatan mesin laser ya jawaban terkait pertanyaan dari Mas Agung nah kemudian uh, oke okay. uh, uh, we have some question again uh, this is one question about the military application ya yeah. Uh, using laser in military purposes. Uh, the question is, uh, what is the differences in application that the laser use? Yeah, the technology differences that using in the military application and manufacturing application. Is the laser has different configuration or special configuration or not? Okay, uh, for the manufacturing and military. So uh, these are two kind of different area or in industry. Yeah? For manufacturing, I you can see that the focus point is quite shorter, shorter. Oh, you, you wanna, um, yeah, size size that. Yeah. Uh, that's my. So, kalau, uh, uh, wait, uh, saya kena share juga. So, kalau uh, di manufacturing, very simple. So, you have length here, and then the laser here, and then you focus. <laughs> so, the focus ini dipanggil focus length. Yeah? So, the length. So, sangat pendek lah. Yeah, the, the range is maybe 
panggil F So paling tinggi pun biasanya for laser you can go to uh, 10mm So sometimes uh, I use about the highest about 300mm Focus tu sangat pendek eh. Tapi kalau the laser military uh, you nak buat apa you nak tembak You nak tambah kapal terbang di atas ni berapa jauh agaknya jarak Jaraknya berapa jauh? Mungkin sampai berapa? Kilometer eh? Betul tak? 10,000 kaki yeah. 10,000 kaki jauh berapa? Jauh lah hmm. so, You need technology to how to transfer the laser Saya tak tahu macam mana lens ni macam mana So kalau laser untuk manufacturing just very simple lens and then you will focus kepada 300 mm maximum but for laser you nak tembak jauh and then you need much more good di semua lah teknologi dekat sini lah laser head okay uh, ni teknologi macam mana tu saya tak tahu lah saya I'm not the people who are making that making the head laser I not this not teknologi yes I'm using the laser only for the purpose of manufacturing but if you are going to military and then you have to study about the pro, the the laser head and then the source Maybe because laser lagi jauh lagi lama dia akan the power the power density tu akan because laser ni dia kalau you tak tengok dia akan jadi macam mengembang macam ni lah kalau you tak betul kan uh, faham tak so uh, okay so bila mengembang macam tu mindat dia punya dia punya diameter spot dia jadi besar kan Betul tak? So maybe Kalau jauh sangat kilometer mungkin spot dia kilometer square lah kan Mungkin kat tempat sini mungkin Centimeter square saja. Apa beza dia? Power density Power density different kan? Ya yeah. So So the the power on laser is power density. So if power density is larger, man, you tembak kapal terbang pun tak jadi apa lah kan. <laughs> so that mean that there is technology here that you need to focus. You can focus. Dia boleh pergi jauh. And then but the point is very high. You want to produce. How they do it, I don't know lah. Uh, for the untuk laser sebab di sini pun saya buat yang power kita pun dekat Uh, dia punya power head ni pun kuat macam ni lah Tak besar mana Dan dia boleh buat 300 meter Kalau you nak buat ni saya tahu Mungkin there is another technology how to transfer that laser I think that, that I don't know I know dah mungkin menjawab kan soalan uh, Soalan ada soalan kedua tadi saya tak ingat Soalan pertama soalan kedua Satu lagi apa satu ya soalan uh, Only one only one yeah, for the latest question jadi uh, jawaban terkait dengan tadi ya perbedaan aplikasi di militer dan industri uh, itu karakteristiknya yang beda adalah fokus lengthnya atau panjang dari fokusnya. Jadi kalau di industri uh, kita bisa pakai 10 sampai 300 mili, tapi kalau untuk yang militer yang tadi dilihat oleh Mas siapa ini Mas Wargo ya. Mas Wargo itu uh, dia memiliki fokus length yang sangat besar sehingga power density-nya akan ter apa ya, terpengaruh di sana nanti. Nah, itu jadi di teknologinya ada di fokus lengthnya. Jadi gimana caranya bisa fokus length yang jauh dan juga power density-nya besar. Mungkin seperti itu ya. Kalau untuk yang militer. Oke, okay, ada lagi pertanyaan. Is there any question from student? Maybe from lecturer? From lecturer? Oh, here we have uh, the new question about the machining yeah, from lecturer here. About machining, hole making is often found in the shape of a taper. How to minimize this? Nah. Well, okay. can, can, can you repeat the question? Uh, in the machining, hole making is often found in the shape of a taper. How to minimize this? How to minimize the taper, what do you mean that eh? Is it the question right? How to minimize the taper, okay? Yes. So, saya tunjuk sekali, saya tak boleh, saya kena terangkan uh, 
uh, I have to share the wait, oh, sorry. I have to share the screen. So uh, where's the wait 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 uh, Okay, that's good enough. Ni sini, ni sini. How to uh, reduce the taper effect? Eh? So when you wet, sorry, when you welding, when you drilling, okay, laser tu dia bentuk macam ni. Eh? Bila dia fokus, dia bentuk macam segitiga macam ni. So bila dia jadi macam tu, mindat dia welding tu dia akan jadi macam ni lah. So sometimes dia akan uh, dia akan mempengaruhi so dia akan menghasilkan taper taper okay okay this is really difficult to solve this problem but if you can remove the z axis so mean that if you can in machine you can control the x to y and z axis so x y axis is moving the table z axis the moving the laser Okay, so you can control the laser head that you can move when you move that. So, maksudnya dia akan tolak ke bawah, ke bawah, ke bawah. Maksudnya head tu ke bawah. Maybe you can reduce that taper. So, number one. Number two, you can reduce the, you can use the higher focus point. Instead, you use, uh, um, instead you use uh, shorter focus point it much better you use very high focus point dia ada sikit tapi mungkin kalau kita dapat hujung ni is much uh, lower lah in terms of the taper huh? okay eh? so that the two type i think of how we can reduce but uh, of course it depend on the so, so laser ni sebenarnya bila dia dekat focus point it, it we can see this is like uh, macam segitiga sebenarnya Bila dekat focus point dia macam ni bentuk dia. So dekat sini dia ada satu area untuk dipanggil focus area. Ha. Kalau boleh dia punya thickness dia sama macam ni so you akan dapat straight. Ya. Ha. Kalau saya lukis macam ni mungkin you ingat laser tu dia akan bertemu macam ni. Tak eh. Dia bukan dia tak bertemu di sini. Dia sebenarnya dekat ujung ni dia macam ni. Ha, dia ada macam ni. Tapi ini sangat pendek lah. Senang. Tapi kalau boleh buat dekat area sini. So you mungkin dapat straight. Okay. I hope the answer question. Uh, for the. Okay. Uh, I hope that. And can. the next question is. Okay. Uh, there are many types of lasers. Uh, such as a solid state type. Laser gas. Laser liquid and etc. So when do you use one of the type? It, okay, why you use at the time? Uh, for me now, I'm using fiber laser for almost all the processes because it is uh, very efficient, uh, very low maintenance. Uh, if you want to use CO2, usually uh, for making marking on the wood, atas apa ni, atas kayu. Kalau nak buat marking ataupun tulisan atas kayu, it much better to use a higher wavelength uh, CO2 laser. Uh, untuk other type of process like welding cutting it much better to fiber because as I told you 1 kilowatt of fiber laser is equal to 10 kilowatt of CO2 so it much much efficient much cheaper on the fiber tapi untuk guna kayu kalau you nak cut kayu ataupun you nak guna apa untuk marking on the wood and then much better use higher wavelength uh, CO2 laser okay for ND yard laser sekarang ni orang tak apa guna dah sebab kos untuk maintenance dengan capital sangat mahal, fiber lagi murah. Okay. Okay. Oh answer the question. So oh, I'm answering your question. Okay. Uh, that is the the answer of the question from Ibu Nidia. Yeah. Oh Ibu. Question from the, Ibu Nidia before. <laughs> yes. Uh, is there any question maybe from student? 
please welcome. I am waiting for your question. Maybe the last two question from student. Okay, uh, so I have from for my personal question, uh, Professor. Uh, maybe it uh, some a uh, little bit like uh, out of the topic. So uh, I'm curious about the control mechanism of the laser itself, especially the application of the laser for cleaning purposes. So does it controlled by uh, moving the mirror or maybe there is another mechanism, mechanical or any expert control mechanism maybe? Oh, okay, to control the, there is a few technology in order to move the uh, power, oh, sorry, the, to move the laser focus. Okay, laser light. Uh, some, they call it the galvanometer. I mean that, I mean that the, the length is, uh, the length is moving. Okay. Usually they use a fixed length. So you use X, Y, Z for machine or CNC table to move like this one. Sometimes they fix, they fix that one and then the, the length is moving. That we call it galvanometer. So we don't need to, oh. we don't need to move that. So we can move. For laser cleaning, I think they use the fixed one. So you, 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 you can move that laser by your hand. That's manual one. Or you just put on the CNC table, CNC controller, and then it moved by the machine. So laser is fixed. For laser marking, they use galvanometer because I, I think they want to be very fast. Huh? If you want to much lower than you, you can see the CNC uh, table, CNC uh, table for uh, automations. Uh, in previous videos, we see that the, we saw that the, for cleaning purposes, the diameter of laser is spread. It it's spread. So does it influence the power density or? the machine can maintain the power density at the same level. Uh, uh, what, what do you mean by spreading? For, for which process? For cleaning. We see okay. that the, the line, uh, the, the light is line shape. Yeah. Ah, you look it's line, but actually it's yeah. like marking very fast. Oh, I see, I see. Uh, it's very fast. Uh, mm. So the galvanometer. Very high. Uh, the, the galvanometer take account to control that yeah, moving. Maybe, yeah, maybe, yeah. Very okay. fast. Hmm. Interesting, very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Inshallah, I will buy one laser cleaning uh, in the next series. I do also some laser cleaning on the uh, laser marking, some of our laser. It can be done, but uh, I think we, we can buy another for the laser cleaning. Actually, we have produced also with the uh, Collaboration with company to look on laser cleaning uh, machine oh. so we can automate the laser cleaning machine. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm still waiting the question, the last two question from you, students. <laughs> okay, is there any question? Maybe one more question again uh, from me. Uh, in the battery, indus industrial battery manufacturer, uh, where this technology could be involved in the battery manufacturing? Uh, because the, in maybe in one year or two years, the Tesla will build uh, the new factory in fabricate battery in Indonesia. So I'm curious about uh, how this technology can be improved in yeah, in battery manufacturing. I think uh, they, they're already using the laser on the battery, not battery, it's more that the, uh, they call it what, uh, um, apa, untuk, untuk, oh, stuff, for the uh, making, Sassis? Uh, titanium uh, chassis, the box itself for the cover. 
Uh, for the cover, they need very small, and then the the sheet metal they use is very thin. So some they use a laser to weld the thin sheet. So when we they use a laser to weld the thin sheet, that that the deformation after welding is is none, it's nothing. If you use uh, joining for like MIG and TIG, the deformation will happen. The sheet metal will deform, and then this you cannot get a straight box. So you can use a laser because it's very localized and then the thermal stress is much, much smaller. So mm. laser such, and then also even the use of uh, making a full cell uh, for the titanium um, to weld the titanium on the full cell. Okay, yeah. All right, any answer your question? Yes, thank okay. you for the explanation. I think uh, there is no more question from the student. Maybe from the lecturer. From Mr. Eliawan, maybe. Uh, no, thank you. Uh, I have no uh, question for Prof. Mazir. Uh, I'm glad uh, to see you again and give the presentation today. Uh, actually, I'm interesting with your research, but uh, for today, I have no, no question, Prof. This is, uh, this is enough for me. Thank you very much, Prof. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, maybe uh, this is the, the last but not least uh, question yeah. to Mr. Professor Mahadir. Uh, if if we as a lecturer want to involve in this technology, uh, uh, do you have any advice for the first step that we should take to research the lasers hmm. for manufacturing? Do you have any advice? First of all, I think I, 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 don't, I did my PhD on laser welding. So I think firstly we have to you have to understand the basic of a uh, laser, uh, the basic of laser first, and then uh, first and I think you need to put first and laser, and then the most uh, important thing is that the safety during your work. I think uh, if sometimes I I I do understand that, of course uh, we are dealing with the system and so on. Uh, as a student, sometimes you like the Gura-gura, my mind kan kadang-kadang it may be dangerous. That one, uh, I have to, you have to take care for the laser safety, and you have to involve laser welding, uh, laser process, and you have to understand the the basic of laser, and then what kind of process that you want to do with laser. Uh, that another second thing, uh, because uh, uh, like a car lah, like a transportation, like a car. You want to, kalau you masuk lumber F1 tu, you need a car like F1 car. If you want to apa naik kereta apa yang best comfortable maybe you need a Mercedes maybe kan. Kalau you nak apa you nak guna apa nak angkut ramai orang and then you have to guna uh, apa bus ataupun van bus. untuk ramai. So uh, first of all what kind of uh, process that you want to study. Uh, it, it cannot be that one laser can can do many all the process you no. Know? So you have to understand what kind of process you want to use, and then you find the specification. Uh, I open to you if you want to study about laser here in in UMP. Uh, I'm I'm uh, I'm uh, what to say? Welcome you if you come here, looking at Nongkapa City. Uh, you want to do uh, either you want to do a PhD or master on and so on. Uh, I'm happy to guide you. So we have a few lasers inside, and we have a lot of. I have a three PhD student now, and then about five or six, seven masters. And working with me, I have uh, three lecturers uh, on my group. I have a group, uh, laser processing group. So I have uh, three lecturers, one coming back from, one coming back from Japan, one, one Pakistani uh, from Pakistan, and one I have from just, just graduate from Canada. Uh, they're all uh, Malaysian. So I have four lecturers under me uh, doing work with me and we have about 
I think about 10, uh, 15 postgraduate students currently uh, for the five or six of these. Uh, so we cover uh, laser welding, laser marking, laser coloring, laser texturing, laser brazing, laser soldering. And now we are trying to explore on the laser cleaning. Uh, hopefully, we can. so that's a lot. Of, so I'm, I welcome you if you want to see here uh, our research and so on. Oke okay, ya, itu tadi uh, Prof Mahathir menuturkan bahwasanya kalau uh, para mahasiswa misalkan ingin melanjutkan studi master atau mau studi S3 uh, bisa ke UMP ya. Jadi Prof Mahathir siap untuk uh, membimbing ya Prof ya. Untuk membimbing Anda kalau Anda ingin melanjutkan uh, proses studi. Jadi ada peluang untuk Anda para mahasiswa yang sebentar lagi mungkin sudah lulus untuk melanjutkan studi S2 mungkin ke luar negeri bisa ke UMP karena UMP juga sudah bekerja sama dengan kita ESC Print jadi buat yang ingin jadi akademisi bisa memanfaatkan peluang ini oke okay. uh, I think maybe there is no more question from students and uh, finally we are at the end of the section and Thank you very much for our speaker, Prof. Mahathir. Thank you for all the participants for joining us today. And I'm Satriawan, nice to meet you and have a nice day. So the time is yours, Mr. Chatur. Ya, yeah, terima kasih, Pak Satriawan. Yeah. Nah, selamat sore Prof. Mahazir, kita sudah di ujung acara. Sekali lagi, terima kasih sudah membagikan ilmunya, to sharing your knowledge. Uh, Mudah-mudahan kita bisa bergabung lagi dalam uh, pertemuan yang selanjutnya. Ya. Mohon maaf apabila dalam penyelenggaraan webinar ini ada kekurangan. Okay, saya selaku host. Pamit, saya ucapkan terima kasih kepada Bapak Ibu semua yang sudah bergabung. Sampai ketemu di sesi webinar yang selanjutnya. Selamat sore, assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.